Hi, my name is Lauren Cornell. I'm a registered dietitian practicing in Los Angeles, California in private practice for my private practice called Lauren Cornell Nutrition, where I specialize in gastrointestinal diseases and disorders. And I'm here today to talk to you about making your dietitian a part of your healthcare team as part of the IFFGD Virtual Advocacy Day 2020. So let's talk about when it's appropriate to bring a dietitian into your healthcare team. In short, if you have symptoms or a diagnosis related to the gastrointestinal system, which is otherwise known as the digestive system, which that system's main function is to digest and absorb and excrete food and nutrients, that would be the appropriate time to then recruit a specialist as part of your healthcare team uh, that is, is specializing in nutrition and food, right? So simply put, if you are, if you have gastrointestinal concerns as part of your healthcare concerns, you should have a registered dietitian on your healthcare team. Um, it doesn't matter if you plan on or you think you might be working with a dietitian just one time, or if it's going to be a life, lifelong partnership um, and that person will be on your team forever. Uh, a dietitian is always appropriate. It's always a good idea to get a consult with a dietitian, and especially if you're not sure, um, that was that's certainly a, a good time to have a conversation with a registered dietitian or have a conversation with your physician or whoever, whomever is taking uh, kind of the reins in your healthcare at the moment about helping you to find one. And we'll talk a little bit about how to find an appropriate dietitian for you. Um, other reasons where you might start to think about adding a dietitian to your healthcare team, if any dietary recommendations have been made to you by any other practitioner that is not a registered dietitian, or a registered dietitian nutritionist. Um, and you specifically, you're looking for the acronyms after a name or the credentials RD for registered dietitian or RDN, registered dietitian nutritionist. This is different than just a nutritionist, which is not the same thing as a registered dietitian, which is an evidence-based practitioner that is credentialed um, versus a nutritionist, which is not. So I just wanted to be clear about that as well. So anytime you're given any rec uh, recommendations related to nutrition or nutrient intake or um, nutrition support, so that would be enteral or parenteral nutrition, um, or any dietary recommendations or modifications whatsoever, uh, that would be another great time to uh, recruit the help of a registered dietitian as a specialist in part of your healthcare team. And on that note, your information that you follow or that you receive or listen to, or uh, watch in video format, or um, read should always come from a registered dietitian. So you always wanna look for that RD or RDN credentialing after the authorship of anything that you're looking at for dietary advice. And I say this because there's a lot of information out there that's conflicting and, and um, controversial, and sometimes just flat out incorrect, and it might send you on a wild goose chase, in terms of nutritional advice, which is so important, especially to gastrointestinal care. So I want you to get the right information and I don't wanna waste your time and money. So I would always suggest looking for that registered dietitian or registered dietitian nutritionist um, credentialing on any authorship of anything that you're, uh, any resource you're looking at for dietetic advice. So that's how you know when it's appropriate to get a dietitian or simply if you have questions about whether or not um, nutrition interventions or nutrition care might help manage your conditions. But again, going back to the first thing I said was, if you have uh, symptoms or a diagnosis or a condition related to the gastrointestinal tract, then it's likely that you would benefit from seeing a registered dietitian and getting evidence-based scientific nutritional advice. So that's first things first. Second thing you might ask is, why should you even consider a registered dietitian as an option for a healthcare provider on your team? First things first, the registered dietitian or registered dietitian nutritionist is the most credentialed scientific expert on nutritional science that exists. So if you were in the inpatient setting in a hospital or in the critical care setting or in any medical facility, um, the registered dietitian would be a member of your interdisciplinary medical team that would be responsible legally for the nutritional advice that you receive or any sort of um, 
recommendations or administrations of nutrition or hydration, they're the number one resource for that. So in the outpatient setting and in the everyday medical setting, you certainly want that same level of care. So there is literally no one else higher credentialed that exists better fit to give you nutritional advice than a registered dietitian. So first and foremost, you want the best on your team. Secondly, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of conflicting information out there regarding dietary practices and GI conditions specifically. So I want you to make sure that you obtain your information from vetted resources that are based in research, clinical practice, and science. So a registered dietitian is obligated to provide you recommendations that are evidence-based. Um, another thing to think about in terms of why a registered dietitian would be a good idea to uh, recruit to your medical team would be just the simple fact that we make on average 200 uh, decisions about food every day. That's overwhelming. And there's a lot of conflicting advice out there about food um, that can sort of muddle that and it can feel um, complicated. And so rather than sort of try to sift through this advice yourself and make an informed decision based on you know, different information out there, let the dietitian do it for you. The dietitian has the responsibility to make this information simple, practical, correct, and tailored to your individual needs. So by hiring a dietitian, the specialist takes over and all you should receive is information that's really easy to follow um, and fits what your needs are in a way that provides you with the least restrictive diet while best managing your symptoms. As the other factor that we constantly have to think about with gastrointestinal care and nutrition is avoiding malnourishment, and that usually comes with unnecessary dietary restrictions. So a great way to avoid that is to just hand it over to a registered dietitian to, to help you with that portion of your care. Um, dietitians, in short, work with nutrition and diets and diet therapy all day, every day. This is what we do. So what's great about that is that we understand the intricacies of all aspects of nutrition and nutrition care. And we also have the best resources at our disposal. So we have things and know of things that will make your life so much easier and will make the decisions about food uh, a lot more simple. So I think it's just a, a good idea to just make sure that dietitian is helping you because it'll just save you a lot of frustration and time. All right, so how do you find a dietitian when you come to this decision that you'd like to add a dietitian to your team? Well, first things first, the IFFGD has a dietitian listing on their website. So you can go there and look through the directory to find dietitians who specialize in functional GI disorders um, or in GI in general. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is to look to reputable organizations that are in the space of whatever condition you've been diagnosed with. For example, if you have been diagnosed with um, in inflammatory bowel disease, so you have Crohn's disease or colitis, you might wanna to go to Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's website and look at their directory of practitioners and you'll find dietitians in that space. The, the way that a dietitian gets on that directory is because they've um, elected to become a professional member of that organization. And so they're involved with that organization, which speaks to their level of um, expertise, knowledge of just that that organization exists and then the information that that organization has put forth. Another example would be if you have um, irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, which is a really popular, if not the most popular of the functional GI disorders, um, you may look to monashfodmap.com, which is Monash University's low FODMAP diet uh, website, and they have a directory of practitioners. Now, the way that dietitians get on that directory is that they've completed the Monash University's low FODMAP diet certification. So to even go further, some of these organizations and their websites have sort of a vetting process to get on their directories. So that's a great way to find a dietitian. And then finally, if you find just a directory of dietitians, say on your insurance network or Yelp or Google business, or um, just by simply searching in your area or from a friend or, or referral from your physician, and that's, a, that's certainly a great place to ask your physician or other healthcare providers that are evidence-based should also be able to help you find a dietitian. Once you find a few dietitians, interview them ask them questions. 
vet them yourself just to see if you guys gel, right? So simply put, you're going to have probably a, a long-term relationship with this person or anybody on your healthcare team. So ask them about their experience. Um, ask them about which professional organizations they may be a member of um, or might be affiliated with or aware of. Um, ask specifics about your condition and your symptoms and also about your lifestyle, your preferences, and any experience that that dietitian might have in working with somebody who, who has similar preferences and, and um, needs as you do. And just get a feel for how your personalities and your approaches to healthcare align. Uh, you know, even if someone's coming highly recommended to you and, you know, you keep hearing that this person is wonderful at what they do and really specializes in your condition, if you just don't get along or you feel that you just don't align um, on the way that you approach things or your viewpoints, it's probably not a good working relationship. And I would certainly recommend seeking out a different dietitian. As long as you keep those sort of um, uh, concrete, um, no budge <laughs> standards, mean, meaning that it is a registered dietitian that you work with, so it's evidence based, so you don't waste any time or money, um, or we call it treatment fatigue. You don't want to develop that by going through a bunch of different practitioners that are kind of sending you on a wild goose chase um, until you arrive back at a registered dietitian. As long as it's a registered dietitian and somebody who understands GI care, there are a lot of options. And, and especially um, at the moment, due to the COVID-19 restrictions on going into an office for healthcare, you have a little bit more flexibility because you can seek virtual care and that may extend past the pandemic. So the next thing that you may uh, ask yourself or question about a dietitian is once you decide that you want to work with a registered dietitian, what information is important to share with your dietitian from your doctor's visits and vice versa? So I'm just going to go down the list. First things first, contact information. Share the contact information of your doctor with your dietitian and vice versa. So make sure your doctor has your dietitian's information and if there's any other member of your healthcare team that is someone who is simply there, but maybe you don't see a lot, or somebody that's very involved with your healthcare. So if you have a psychotherapist that you see regularly, um, maybe you see a pelvic floor specialist or a physical therapist of some sort um, for other areas that help you manage your care through other modalities, um, I would share that contact information with your team. And I always recommend for a few of the things that I'll talk about in this area about sharing information across healthcare practitioners, that you type this information out and maybe even have like a little booklet that's electronic where you can print it or share it very easily, just so you don't have to um, repeat yourself a lot and, and feel like it's, it's difficult or taxing on you to share this information. So just keeping a running list of healthcare practitioners that you work with and their information is a good idea. Next thing you want to share with your dietitians from your doctor's visit and vice versa is your healthcare history. Just flat out a chronological story from the time your symptoms started to present day that just kind of outlines what your journey has been like. Who have you worked with? What do you suspect started symptoms? Maybe you have no idea whatsoever. Maybe some travels were in there. Maybe you had some food poisoning or something at some sort. Just any uh, events or incidents that may point to giving some direction to the healthcare practitioner that's going to look at your document. Um, include any tests that you've had done, any findings that were found by any of the testing or suspected by any practitioner that they've mentioned to you, and of course any treatments that you've gone through. And in the case of a dietitian, I would absolutely recommend, you know, letting the dietitian know a little bit about your diet history. You know, have you, um, do you have a history of nutritional recommendations that you've received from different sources throughout your journey of healthcare and, or that you've tried and, or found on your own? And just kind of, you know, what that look like? Um, and don't assume that like, if you say I tried um, the ketogenic diet that we might know what that looks like, right? So I would explain like, for me, that meant I removed these foods, but I added more of these foods and I felt this way, or this did or did not work for me and here's why. That's helpful information, I think, for the for the for anybody in your healthcare team to understand, but definitely for your dietitian. Biggest thing that you can share across the board is goals of care. 
What I mean by that is if your doctor and you have discussed, this is what we're going to do. We're going to trial this medication for X amount of time. And then with that doesn't work, we're going to discontinue that medication. And then we're going to do some testing and it's going to look like this and it will take this amount of time. And then depending on the results of those um, tests, we're going to go this way or we're going to go this way. That's helpful for your dietitian to understand because then they can tailor your goals of care of nutrition care with your goals of medical care based on what your doctor plans to do. Uh, a great story that I can share that will perhaps be helpful in understanding what I mean by this is yesterday, actually, I had a patient who has a condition called eosinophilic esophagitis. Some of you may or may not know what this means, but I'll explain a little bit in terms of how this might fit into something that might happen to you. So in the case of this um, patient's condition, typically what happens is um, the patient trials a medication called a proton pump inhibitor. And that helps first to understand, to confirm the diagnosis, but to also help to understand what, help, what may help to best manage the patient's symptoms. So this patient had had this condition for a long time, was very versed in the different treatment modalities, and had already tested um, the proton pump inhibitors or PPI medications. His primary concern at this point, when we were well into his dietary care, was one, he had a symptom that was a little bit uncharacteristic of his condition, and it was a lower GI pain, where this is an upper GI condition traditionally. Um, but also, we were in the middle of dietary trials to find out if he had um, a food allergy or a food trigger for symptoms of acid reflux um, or sort of a uh, feeling that his throat was closing up when he ate food, which are very traditional um, symptoms of his condition. And because of a lack of communication between his new gastroenterologist, his primary care physician, and then myself, his current and, and long-term dietitian, um, the patient arrived at his appointment yesterday very frustrated. And he was frustrated because he felt that, in his words, he was not being heard by his practitioners, that his uh, symptoms were being dismissed because he had said, my, my symptoms that I'm concerned with are this lower GI pain that is persistent, not acid reflux, which he had remedied by removing some dietary triggers um, from his daily nutrition. Um, and, and he was confused because he didn't understand why he had just recently been prescribed a proton pump inhibitor again by his primary care physician. So in this case, um, I stepped in and my main concern and my job at that point was to make sure to facilitate communication between the medical team. So one more reason to add a dietitian to your, to your team is that it's one more person advocating for your care. And that's the hope, right? So in this case, I was able to have a conversation with the patient's entire team, which wasn't aware that we were doing dietary care in an attempt to figure out what the patient's um, dietary triggers were food triggers were for his symptoms. So if we were going to mask his symptoms by using a PPI, which weren't even symptoms he was actually experiencing, he wasn't going to be able to determine whether or not new foods that we were introducing were going to cause those symptoms of his condition. And he was dealing with something else. And that's kind of the situation that happens sometimes with gastrointestinal care, right? Like sometimes it, it, it travels and maybe we, we have upper GI concerns and then sometimes we have lower GI concerns because we're digestively compromised if you're in the GI world, right? So that's just an example of why you would want to share your goals of care with each individual practitioner with your team. Another thing that you want to definitely share um, with your doctors and your dietitians would be any history of disordered eating diagnoses. So these would be things like anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder, orthorexia, or an eating disorder not otherwise specified, or any eating disorder behaviors. Um, things that go under this um, umbrella are food fears, and those can be developed just simply by fearing eating because you're worried that food is going to cause your GI symptoms. So that would be something you want to make sure that your team knows about. Just, hey, I just want to be honest. I'm a little concerned about adding more vegetables to my diet because these have caused me symptoms in the past. Help me work through this or understand why we need to do this or why I should or shouldn't have this fear. Um, and then also any sort of body dysmorphia or body image issues that you have that may be impacting your decisions to eat or not eat, right? These are big, big, big in the GI world, so I can't emphasize this enough. 
that you want to be transparent about any history of eating disorder, eating disorder behaviors, or just any even thoughts about food or um, body image fears or, or dysmorphia. Another thing you want to make sure that you share between your doctor and your dietitian are any aspects of life happenings or events or things that you're going through um, that may affect your access to nutrition or in general, right? So what I mean by that is if you just lost your job, that may affect your, your um, income, right? And then your ability to purchase foods um, over others that your dietitian might be recommending. And dietitians, like I said, have incredible resources and so do doctors. So you always wanna make sure that your healthcare team is very aware of what your capabilities and your resources are and what's going on in your life because we care and your healthcare team should really care about what's going on. So we also wanna know, you know, do you have any stressors going on in your life that might affect things? Um, you know, are you having anxiety about um, tests coming up in school if you're a student or something going on with your family if there's any family issues? Not that you need to feel compelled to share everything, especially if you're a private person, but it is helpful information if you simply state to your healthcare practitioner of any type, your dietitian or your doctor, um, you know, I'm just going through a really stressful time right now. And I just want to let you know that because that helps us to understand what your needs are and how we can help meet those needs. Other things to share, any pertinent medical records. So recent test results, blood work or urinalyses, um, urine tests is what I mean. Um, recent histology. So any sort of scopes that you've had done, biopsies, et cetera, related to your GI tract or otherwise. Um, things in the or otherwise category that might be relevant to your GI um, health care would be, let's say you started to con you started to experience back pain. And for that back pain, you were um, you were recommended to take or you were prescribed or you self-prescribed um, NSAIDs as a pain medication. So you start taking ibuprofen for your back pain regularly and that may start to affect your GI tract and your symptoms. So we would wanna know that, right? Um, if there's been any um, changes to any outside medication, um, supplements, new or existing that you're taking, anything like that, you absolutely wanna share with your um, dietitian or your doctor. Um, if you wanna share chart notes from your medical visits, um, after visit summaries from your medical visits, if you have a, a patient portal, a lot of things are electronic now, you can access from your phone or print those out. Um, or email to your practitioners, or any recommendations that you've received at recent healthcare visits. And then finally, for your dietitian, it's a really good idea if you can keep like even a day or three days worth of your food and beverage and water intake. So anything going in the chute, I like to say, um, and then anything coming out. So telling us about your bowel movements, when do you have them, you know, what time of day, what's, what do they look like? What's the consistency like? Are they formed and complete? Um, are they pellets? Are they loose stool? You know, that kind of thing, all that stuff helps. And then absolutely telling us, you know, your symptoms within that log. So did you eat breakfast at 7.30 a.m. and then you started to feel bloating and gas and, and abdominal distension at 9.30 a.m.? that gives us information. So anything like that is helpful. And more is better. So even if you're like, I don't know if the dietitian or the doctor really wants to know this, give it to us because worst case scenario, we just say, yeah, I don't really need to see this. And that's fine. Uh, so I hope that covers just kind of like an idea of what to do when you finally recruit the dietitian to your healthcare team. So why is connecting the dots between the dietitian, the doctor and the patient so important for overall treatment? Simply put, we don't wanna waste the patient's time and money. We wanna avoid treatment fatigue. So treatment fatigue is you've been following a dietary um, therapy for far longer than you needed to because it was recommended to you by a physician or perhaps a different type of healthcare practitioner that's not a dietitian. And then when you finally think, you know what, I'm gonna see a dietitian about this. I've been on this dietary therapy for two years and you get to the dietitian and they go, oh, wait, that was actually not the most appropriate dietary therapy for you. Let's switch gears. Or uh, what's a bummer because you, you didn't receive the most accurate resources for this. And this actually is way less restrictive than you've been following for the past two years, right? So just to avoid those types of things, um, it's important to connect the dots between a dietitian, doctor, and a patient. But that's also why you want to seek the advice of a specialist within whatever um, 
field of the recommendation that you're receiving, right? Um, you also want to make sure that it's important to connect the dots between these, these folks because that's going to make sure that you are receiving the most thorough care, right? Um, then that way also all your healthcare practitioners are able to capture the full picture of the patient's case uh, or your case. Um, ultimately though, we're trying to avoid frustrations and to make overall your healthcare experience more human and more compassionate. You are not a medical record number. You are a person with character traits, life experiences, preferences, and needs. And those should be considered, heard, anticipated, and met, um, exceeding your ex expectations. That is good healthcare. Um, all of these aspects of you should be taken into account by your healthcare team when deciding on best goals of care collectively for you. If your practitioners don't know things, then they can't respond accordingly. So sharing that information is important. Um, you wanna do so while respecting the capacity of your healthcare practitioner. You know, we're all human, so it might not be that we can answer really long emails in between appointments and just, you know, have that conversation with your healthcare practitioner too. Like, how would you prefer that I contact you? Um, you know, if the email is going to be a long one, should I just schedule an appointment? That kind of thing, right? Um, remembering that you are your own advocate. I mean, that's essentially why you're here today and listening to these talks, right? Because you're your own advocate. You are your own CEO of your company, so to speak. You call the shots, you are in charge. So do the appropriate um, vetting that you need and feeling comfortable with the practitioners that you're choosing, not just based on someone else's recommendation. Um, and feel kind of embodied and empowered to make those decisions yourself. And hopefully these talks are helpful in that regard. Um, and, and ultimately collect the care and the care team that you deserve and you deserve the best, right? So this week, I, I just wanna tell this little story. I had a patient who was telling me about, he had lost his job about a month ago. We've been working together for about three months. Uh, which is obviously very stressful and sad, and it was a job he really loved. Well, he told me this week, hey, I got this new job, wanted to tell you about it, I'm really excited about it, and he stopped himself in the middle of the, um, the story, and he's like, I wanted to tell you about it because, well, and he said, well, because you care, but also because blah, 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 and there were reasons that were going to affect his nutrition care going forward, and he wanted to tell me about that, but I stopped him, and I said, I just wanted to say that you just said without hesitation that you wanted to tell me because you know that I care. And this patient had in particular had received um, suboptimal health care that he just felt he wasn't heard and didn't receive the best um, treatments that were really tackling his symptoms prior to starting to work with myself and, and a team that we put together. Um, and I said, you're absolutely right. We do care. And the fact that you feel that and you know that is exactly the caliber of healthcare that you now should see going forward. And so that is really the level of healthcare and the level of rapport that you should look for in finding a healthcare practitioner, but absolutely a dietitian. You know, diet is intimate, it's personal, it ropes in traditional foods and nostalgic foods that you've probably eaten for a long time. And, you know, we have an emotional relationship with food. So your relationship with your dietitian should be a strong one. So I hope that helps in uh, helping you make a dietitian part of your healthcare team and understanding why it's so important. And, uh, and yeah, good luck to you and, and your journey with your registered dietitian. Thanks.